So in the last uh, two days, I have gotten multiple requests to uh, basically, hey, I I want to sell you my collection. And these, I believe, are all in Houston. So I'm replying back to them. And I think the market for Magic the Gathering cannot possibly get lower, which means it might be a good time to buy. So Magic the Gathering is certainly a very, very difficult investment to make right now. I wouldn't even call it an investment, but if you needed to uh, open some cards or, you know, you're addicted to the casino, it's not bad. You know, it's a lot cheaper than those addictions. So we're looking at the Card Kingdom top cards they sold, and it does get wet my appetite a little bit to look into these collections. So since, uh, I think the last set I got was I have New Compenna, I have uh, Dominaria Returns or whatever, Remastered, whatever it's called. And I have uh, Baldur's Gate. And then I have like a lot of Crimson Vow, which is a terrible, terrible set. My God, that was a really, really bad set. And these collections I'm seeing, the reason that they're wetting my appetite is it's the first time in a long time since I saw alpha and beta cards being sold. And I look at that and I say to myself, oh, that is quite interesting. I'm very intrigued by that um, because I always, you know, I'm always intrigued in, in these type of valuable cards, right? Because in my opinion, there's not going to be more of them. So the, the bet is on the survival of Magic the Gathering. And I think it can survive. I'm not positive. And here's where I have a little bit of a overall problem with Magic the Gathering. The leadership is very bad. Like, what I mean really, really bad. I mean, wow. <laughs> the leadership is among the most incompetent I've ever seen. Uh, from Chris Cox to Cynthia Williams. They really have done everything they could to try to destroy this game. And they have been somewhat successful, I think. Uh, but... If they change their leadership, I'm thinking, oh, well, okay, maybe there's something that can be done here. Uh, another really important thing that I kind of want to mention is magic cards are fun. You know, I'm having a lot of fun now that it's no longer really about money. I don't have the game store to worry about. It's much more relaxing, in my opinion. Um, I do think uh, in terms of long-term value, magic will have some. Uh, will it be as good as it used to be? No, never. Magic can never go back to what it was in the past. That being said, uh, you know, I mean, I think these collections are just really, really hard to pass up, guys. And the reason they're so difficult to pass up is you might never see them again. Like, they rarely switch hands. Like, as more and more people, they get consolidated. So what happens to these collections is they get consolidated and suddenly one or two people start buying them all and that's what happens and that's not there's not much you can do um except um when these collections do come available you might want to buy them so that's kind of my opinion as to where things are right now that there are some amazing collections and there are many people selling and wanting to get out of magic if you believe in the long term of magic, it's not a crazy thing for you to say, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and buy into this set. I'm going to go ahead and buy into some of the rarer cards because you never see them. I can say I haven't really seen collections come onto the market since early 2020. And that's it. Um, there, A lot of the higher end collections are just not available ever. And for any amount of money, especially when somebody wants to sell it via buy list. Uh, when people want to sell it via buy list, that is quite interesting in my opinion. Uh, that is obviously a very, very low price. And in terms of, you know, in terms of why, I'm not sure. You know, I mean, uh, it, it does seem like a good G deal in my opinion. So a lot of people are selling their collections. A lot of people are willing to take buy list or even a little less. Uh, and a lot of people just want to get out of Magic the Gathering in general. This leads into one obvious thing, which is, hey, 
Is it the time to buy Magic cards? I think it's time to look at it. it, it it's got to go collection by collection, right? But, yeah, it's interesting. It's so interesting because the collections that are popping up, I don't see these cards. I have not seen these cards since early 2020 when people were panicking during... I saw them for a very brief moment in time where people were selling Alpha, Beta, Arabian Nights, Legends um, during the COVID and, and then Revise. Revise, you know, was hot at the time. But typically, no one's... So if somebody has, like, a play set of every dual land, that doesn't hit the market ever. It's hitting the market. In fact... A collection where the guy has a playset of every dual land has just been emailed to me, and we're working on the situation. And it's not just revised; he's got some unlimited, it's got some beta. Like beta dual lands are not supposed to hit the market, but they are. Vintage cards are hitting the market like there's no tomorrow, and I think people need to get cash. I think something has happened. Maybe it's economy. Maybe Bidenomics. I know you guys don't love to talk about Bidenomics, but it does impact the thing. It, it absolutely impacts, um, <laughs> I, you know, I just love buying this shit, I don't know what it is, I was talking to my girlfriend the other day, I don't know what it is, you know, it's just like, um, you know, it's just like, I, I guess it's like too good for a deal, I guess it's the, the Asian-ness in me, that like the deal is like too good, like you know it's a deal, it's, it's a deal, and I've messed up a lot of deals, um, Oof. Yeah, I have this video titled Buying Your Worthless Magic the Gathering Collections for Uber. I think I call it Uber Cast. For too much cast? Uber Cast. Uber Cast. I like Uber. Yeah, man. I'm I'm buying. I'm buying shit because it's, it's stuff that I. Oh, man. I can't turn down. Like, a, this dude's got like two alpha. Again, I don't love Alpha because the edges... I don't know enough about Alpha. I'll probably not buy this Alpha. But he's got two Alpha Sarah Angels and eight Beta Sarah Angels. I'll probably pick up the Beta ones. I just don't know much about Alpha and clipping. It just worries me a lot that well, you can clip a Beta into an Alpha. And I wouldn't be... I personally do not feel confident enough to be able to 100% tell the difference. And that's why I don't buy it. Um, that's my opinion about Alpha, is I just personally don't have enough information about that uh, to pay a premium of 5 times, 8 times, 10 times for an Alpha card over a Beta card, when a Beta card is just a lot easier to deal with and a lot easier to sell as well. So back to my initial assessment, I think uh, in time, Magic will recover. A lot of these cards might go up in value, may, may hold value. They may go down for the next 6-10 months. But I do feel like a election period, a new, you know, people get excited for the election. The economy might be doing a lot better in the future. And the economy is not doing terrible right now. But I do think people want to move away from, I would call them, uh, non-traditional assets, right? Which would be like crypto and so on. Even Bitcoin is doing really well. You know what? It might be Bitcoin. I don't know what it is. I honestly can't tell. There's so many different factors that like anyone who says, oh, I know why, no, there's no. It might be Bitcoin. Bitcoin's like at what forty five thousand now, from like twenty thousand or something, like sub twenty. It does seem that there's some type of relationship of between Bitcoin and Magic cards. Anyway, my guys, 